Hey, what's up, guys? I always say that. Shut up. Don't put this part in the video. You do this every time. <laughs> Welcome to Poor Man Mods. Today, we're going to cut apart this torque converter so we can tell you guys how one works. Alright, when I'm doing these cuts, you can, I'm kind of like placing them strategically because a torque converter is made out of two stampings and they're sandwiched together. And right here is a weld. And if you can zoom in, you can see this is one part and this is the other part. Here's the seam weld. I'm cutting underneath that weld because that's where it will free up everything so I can take it and split it in half. Oh no, it's bleeding. Yeah, I'd, I'd hit a vein. Oh, 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 that's terrible. We attempted to drain this before, but since there's so much pumps and turbines and statters inside, which you'll find out what those are, it prevents all the stuff from draining out at first. So. Okay, we got all the cuts made, so you can see here it's now two pieces. And we're going to open this thing up. Ooh. Oh, look at that, it looks like a jet engine. Okay, now a harmonic balancer is a thermo, or er, thermo, a uh, hydrocoupler. So a hydrocoupler basically means that it uses liquid to transmit power. Now what happens in a torque converter is this part right here, this, and this bottom bowl here, they were originally welded together, but I ground them apart into two pieces. But you can see here, this bolts directly to the flywheel, so this part right here is spinning the same speed as the flywheel. So what happens is when the engine starts turning, there's fluid that sits inside here. Centrifugal force basically forces it outwards on the edge of this housing. And when that happens, um, because like the inside of the uh, torque converter is kind of like a U-shaped, it'll force all of that fluid into the turbine right here. And the turbine has thin blades. So once the fluid hits these blades, it turns the turbine. And the turbine is what connects to the transmission on the input shaft. So the engine's turning, the flywheel's turning, it makes the pump turn, pumps all of the fluid on the outside edge of the torque converter, and it hits this turbine. Now once that happens, there's this thing, which is a stator. The stator makes the torque converter want, run a lot more efficient because the blades on this pump and the blades of this turbine are turned opposite directions. So once the fluid from the turbine exits and goes out through the center, like you can see here, it enters through these fins and exits through these fins. When it exits these fins, it's pushed forward, but because these blades are finned, it's also pushed the direction that these blades are angled. And that direction is opposite of what these blades are finned at. So you're having fluid come out one way and it's hitting, it's hitting these fans at another direction. So that would create a lot of inefficiency and it wouldn't make the torque converter work properly. So this is what the stator is for. It, the fluid going out of the turbine hits these blades and the stator basically redirects the fluid movement into a direction that's the same as these inner blades as the pump. So once the fluid has exited these fins from the turbine, it hits the stator, changes direction, 
And then and now the fluid is lined up with direction of the inner pump. So it's basically a cycle over and over and over again. And with the stator, the stator is connected to the transmission, but if you look on all map transmission, there's like two, it looks like it's two input shafts. The bigger one is actually fixed. If you look at Mike's transmission, it looks like there's two input shafts, one small one and one big one, resting one outside of it. The stator is connected to the bigger one, and the bigger one is fixed, it doesn't move. And the stator has a one-way clutch. You can see if you zoom in here, it'll turn this way. This is the part that goes onto the input shaft. It'll turn this way, but it will not turn that way. So this is because once the turbine and the pump have reached the same speed, the stator doesn't really need to be used. So it can just freewheel, which will free up a lot of power. But when the turbine and the pump are working kind of against each other, the pump is driving the turbine get up to speed. That's when the stator is used. Now uh, with torque converters, the final drive going into the transmission is not the same speed as the engine because you're using fluid instead of the mechanical device to get everything connected. So to create more efficient torque converters, they have direct lockup clutches. So once, I, this probably doesn't have it. I don't think it does, but new torque converters have it. So once the pump and the turbine are spinning close to the same speed, a clutch locks them up. And now it's a direct drive from the engine to the transmission. Um, but I don't think this one has it. Um, typically, Wait, huh? I saw what looked like a clutch pick that up out of the casing this yes flip it over it actually might be that looks like a clutch it, see i'm not too sure if it is or not it might be because it has a bunch of sprung like springs in it same as like some clutches have yeah where this will absorb a lot of shock but this might be a clutch i'm not sure i'm sure somebody will see this video will be able to tell us or not but these things are actually pretty cool how they work. So, are we at the point where I can ask the question, what does a torque converter do, main purpose? It basically... It transfers power from the engine to the transmission, but since it's by fluid, you can leave your car in drive. Mm -hmm. So the engine's still spinning, but since it's at a lower RPM, the fluid's not spinning as much, and it's not spinning. Yeah, if you ever notice, if you're driving an automatic transmission, you're at stoplight. You don't put it in neutral like a manual transmission. I do. Well, you well, can. Neutral bomb the shit out of it. Yeah, you yeah. like you leave it in drive, and it, you have to keep your foot on the brake. If you let your foot off the brake, you can feel the car start to move. That's basically a torque converter working because the engine spin at speed and. The pump is spinning at a certain speed and it's trying to get the turbine to move the same speed, but the engine speed isn't powerful and fast enough to get this turbine to engage and overpower your brakes. So it'll just pump fluid and there's like a little bit of friction in here, but your brakes have stronger friction. So it isn't going to do anything. Now, if you have like some race cars, like with automatic transmissions, they have like really high stall torque converters and they're usually a lot smaller diameter than this and basically you have to get your engine up to a certain rpm before the turbine will engage and drive the transmission so that's why you see like guys hit the brakes and then hit the gas and you see the rear end kind of jack up and they're preloading the torque and as soon as they let off the brakes it just takes off so these things are pretty cool, and I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> Epic ending. <laughs> yeah, I, I said what I need to say. So if you guys want to like research more, I'm sure there's plenty like like <clears throat> other websites that'll tell how it works. But that's basically I just showed you all the inner workings of one, like how it works. So hopefully I teach you guys a little bit. Alright, I don't know what to say now. <laughs> <laughs>